And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is our second best of two of the night for Academy League. Welcome back to House Party 5v5. My name is DJ Darkwing D. I got a new color caster with me for this set. Everyone, please welcome Arcana 3. How's it going? I'm doing all right. How you doing today, Darkwing? I am doing fantastic. I'm a little bit tired, but hey, we got two games to go, and we are going to power through this one. Band starting to come out now. Ezreal, Graves, uh, definitely a couple of good bands there. It's just things you don't want to deal with right now. Poppy as well. Yeah, definitely. We saw Poppy just go on a rampage last game. I mean, what was she? Eight and three, nine and three, something like that. And she something was like it was sick. Yeah, it was. She was just proving to be a very devastating <laughs> pick overall. So just get that out of there. Throw in another great band. You know, great split push. You can't deal with her all the time. You got to get rid of that. Absolutely. Uh, Malphite as well. Uh, something that I like is these are all bands that we didn't see uh, last game. I'm, I'm really kind of surprised. Uh, you're a 0% pick and ban for the last set. Yeah, you know, I didn't get to really watch the last set fully, but that is surprising to me. Uh, maybe it's because Fiora at a skill level, since this is Academy League, guys. This is bl yeah. golden below. Uh, Fiora is a difficult champion to play at some level, so, you know, we gotta maybe sometimes not ban her, sometimes pick her. Udyo, another great ban. He's terrorizing solo queue right now, so. Uh, yeah, he's ridiculous. This is something we talked about the other night. Uh, 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 I want to say, actually, last night. Uh, was, I mean, who would have thought that Rudic Echoes would get a nerf because of somebody like Udyo? Ridiculous. I know, right? Like, Udyo. The guy that you'd think he's a troll pick, Trick 2G, just bring him back in style. But now he's a legitimate pick. He's open. a menace, just a menace. Just open the, the, those gates, boys. All right, we got a Nautilus coming out first. And it looks like we got our bottom lane coming out. You know, we forgot to mention the team names. Where the heck is my head? Oh, uh, we got Black Thunder over on the blue side and Lucker Puppies on the red side. Uh, so we do see the, the Lucker Puppies bottom lane coming out now. Uh, the Lucian, uh, Lucian, as well as the Braum. Uh, both great picks right now, and a Gragas coming out now as well. Yeah, Gragas is actually really strong at the moment with his W uh, change, I should say. It gives him an AoE clear on his W, and since Gragas is all about that AoE clear, he has three other abilities that do it. He clears jungle just incredibly fast. Almost, I would say, as fast as Nidalee, but that's a little bit of a of exaggeration. But he's definitely one of the top clears for me right now as a jungle main, so I think it's a good pick right here. And then we're hovering over Caitlyn, which in retrospect to what uh, the bot lane of Lucker Puppies is, which is Lucian Braum, it's a good pick because then you can zone off the Lucian and the Braum in a situation. We'll have to see if that's a Nautilus support or top, because that that will depend on what's going to happen in the bottom lane. Yeah, I, I they, they might need to work around now getting the Tom Ketch coming out, and it, it really looks like... Uh... Lucker Puppies just kind of know what they want. They've been picking fairly fast. Lee Sin uh, going to be heading towards the jungle. Tom Ketch up in that top lane. Yeah, both very solid picks right here. Uh, Lee Sin has that early pressure and then can become a tank later. Um, I have seen some people at, uh, you know, I should say Golden Below, but I have seen them in the ELO that I'm at, which is Diamond, play full out AD Lee Sin. So depending on what he needs to play, he'll, you know, build accordingly. Um, Tom Kench in the top lane, another menace we all know and love. Cannot die because of Grey Shield. Uh, very strong pick, depending if it's Shen or Nautilus. Um, Shen into Tom Kench is a good pick, 1-6. to six. It just really depends if Shen can really abuse that lane correctly. And if he can't, it'll be really hard for him to come back in that lane because Tom Kench starts to deal massive amounts of damage when he gets his ultimate, which gives him... I think 60 plus damage. And then we also, I didn't talk about the Lux. The Lux is a great just blind pick overall as a mid laner. So we'll have to see. This team composition from Black Thunder looks really, really good because it's a really pork, uh, poke oriented composition. So we'll have to see what happens. Yeah, we saw Lux in the last game and it was just ridiculous what was coming out there. So uh, hovering over the Urgot, how do you think this works into, that, uh, into our team comp here? Well, I'm not sure if you'll lock in the Ur Urgot unless you know, you're Swifty. Yeah, shout out to Shrifty, but um, <laughs> Urga is an interesting mid pick because we know that Lucian is going bottom uh, for unless some strange reason he's going somewhere else. Urga is. But Timo, you know, do it, do it. Timo, lock it well, in, awesome. Awesome, Timo, you lock Timo that was, in right now. I don't know. Timo lock was Lux. it in. Lock it in. Oh, man. If he doesn't I don't, do this, I'm leaving. Oh, please don't. I'm just joking. Because... I'm just joking. 
The Teemo, <laughs> I, I feel that Teemo, if he locks in Teemo with his Lux, uh, I don't want to say too much, but I feel that the Lux will win that lane. Oh, no, it's going to be Sinja. Oh, awesome. You just, I'm totally going to be biased this game because he didn't go uh Oh, boy. Teemo. I love Satan. He's my favorite champion. He is now. Well, my favorite champion is Time Boy, which is Echo, so <laughs> I'm a little bit biased about that one, too. But Sinja versus Lux is a very good uh, matchup for a most of these, it's sort of a skill matchup. If you play Lux correctly, you can kill Syndra. If you play Syndra correctly, you can kill Lux. So we'll have to see what it's going to happen from the junglers. That's going to really sway what's going to happen. Uh, in the mid lane, at least. Um, have you ever played Syndra I, in this metagame? I think she's pretty good, but, you know, that's just my opinion. Yeah, she's somebody that I've been uh, trying to play a little bit more, but uh, hasn't been going too well, so I'm just going to stick to my Ezreal. So uh, these guys got about uh, 15 seconds to go in. It does look like we're going to see the bottom lane of Kate and uh, Nautilus. How do you think that stacks up against the, the Braum Lucian? So yeah, like I was saying earlier, Caitlyn's really good with his zoning traps to really sort of abuse how Lucian and Braum are going to move in the lane. Granted, Lucian and Braum is not to be understated as a weak bottom lane. They're going to use Lucian's passive with uh, Braum's passive, which I think it's uh, I think it's called Winter's Bite. Well, we all know what it is. It stuns you for a, a good amount of time. So if they can, you know, weave in the auto attacks well, they can definitely abuse the Nautilus and Caitlyn. But with Caitlyn, particularly, if you plant traps down correctly, you can zone off the Braum from coming in close. You can zone in the Lucian from coming in close because of her abusive range. And with Nautilus, they're just tanking up that damage and, you know, providing that big, beefy line, front line and that bot lane. It should be sort of an even bot lane. Like I said, Earlier with the mid lane, it's a skill matchup. Bot lane's a skill matchup. So it's going to really depend, again, on the junglers and maybe Shen, because Shen, you know, the global teleport master himself, himself can just show up anywhere, make it a 3v2, a 4v2. So we'll have to see what happens there. Yeah, it should be interesting. So this is something I like to talk about while we have the, uh, the three minute delay, and that's the jungle pressure. Where do you see each of these junglers going? Let's start with the Gragas, who's starting to see a bit of that resurgence now yeah gragas has been known as a very strong early game jungler because of his w which is a percentage health ability i believe it deals maximum amount of health i think it's eight percent so it's he's a really good clearer and he's really good at applying pressure on the enemy jungler or anywhere he needs to be because he just brings out so much innate damage early. So what I want to see Gragas do is I want him to see abuse either the Tom Kench or the Syndra very well. Because bot lane has, you know, the escape mechanisms to uh, stand behind me and pursue. I'm, well, I think it's called dash or pursuit, one of the two. And he can, they can get away very easily from Gragas. So what Gragas needs to do is really try to get either the Shen or the Lux ahead. And use his stun, use his slows, and, you know... Make these immobile champions not have an escape anymore. Make them waste flash and get those leads for the for his uh, laners and transition that into different places of the map. That's what Gragas needs to do. Lee Sin, same thing, but it's going to be a little bit harder for him to gank actually because he doesn't have innate CC. So what he should do is he should actually go in the jungle and try to find Gragas. Kill the Gragas in the jungle because Lee Sin, as we all know, is so strong level 2, level oh, yeah. 3. So if he goes find the jungler and then, you know, kills the jungler and not allow Gragas to pressure his lanes, that's what his job should be because that's how he's going to get killed. It's hard to gank Lux, it's hard to gank Shen, it's hard to gank Caitlyn and Nautilus. So for him, it should be just finding the jungler, getting deep wards in there, uh, pinpointing out and counter ganking where the Gragas is going to be. That's what he should be doing. So we'll have to oh. see if these guys do it, but, you know, <laughs> that's why we have Academy League. We're here to teach you guys, so... There we go. So we got about 10 seconds left before we get into the loading screen. Stick around. We'll be right back for game number one of this best of two between Black Thunder on the blue side and Lucker Puppies on the red side.
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Game number two of this best, or excuse me, game number what? Where the heck? This is the second best of two that we're seeing. I'm out of my mind right now. My name is DJ Darkwing Dion with uh, Arcana. We got Blue Thunder on the blue side and Lucker Puppies on the red side uh, for, like I said, game number one of this best of two of Academy League. So we see everyone starting to come out, and it looks like we uh, might. Did I call them Blue Thunder? Yeah, accidentally. I'm totally but... cheese. It's been a long day, okay? I got to work at 5 a.m. <laughs> this morning, and I'm just going to go with it. So, uh, we do see Freedom coming in, as well as a little bit of fighting up at the top side. There is the Red Lobster already on uh, Consig. I'm just going to back yeah, out, these... though. He'll be able to heal up in time. Yeah, these guys are already going at it. They're trying to abuse Brahms level 1, and Thomas just, you know, he wants to have a little of a, a slap fight with uh, Shen up here. Yeah, just playing a little bit of a... Okay, actually, I, I'm, I'm not going to say what I was going to say. So, uh, it has to do with his tongue. <laughs> but that's besides the point. So, it does look like uh, Jonesy and Chaco are going to go ahead and... Uh, well, actually, I take that back. Gragas is on the bottom side. I thought they were going to be able to get the uh, experience uh, over there from the Krugs. But it looks like both of these bottom laners are just going to help out their jungler. Yeah, this is a pretty standard start from both of these guys. Um, the Lee Sin just getting Gromp. Go where you're... And then uh, Gracchus is getting Krugs, and, you know, you just go where your bot lane is. They give you the best leash as possible, then you move on from there. Um, we'll have to see what happens after, because what Lee Sin can do after he gets Gromp is he can go immediately to Gracchus' red buff and invade him. So we'll have to see what happens there. Um, what's going to happen then is, if he does do that, it's going to be up to Lux and Nautilus and Caitlyn to come back and help his um jungler out and but doesn't think like he's doing that he's just gonna get his blue buff and move on from there well you know gragas did take a little bit of extra time to uh take everything he's over to his red buff now we'll see if he wants to head over there uh but man a lot of uh fighting already going on in the uh, mid lane as well as this top lane frosty uh not coming out the uh better of that one but he doesn't have his uh his opportunity to eat shed yet which is going to be a lot of damage coming out eventually yeah, it's really going to be up to Shen to abuse, like I said, that 1 to 5 levels. Because it's is Shen's going to out-trade Tom Kent in these early levels because of his um, his new Q, which is, I think, a percentage health damage. Um, let me look over it. It's Twilight Assault. Um, it gives him a shield, and it gives him 3% target max health. But it seems oh, like they have man. a fight. Frosty gets thrown over into the tower, and there is one stack. Can he continue to stay on it? He decides to back off, and Shen's just going to go ahead and uh, get a, a couple of biscuits there. Or actually, yeah. take that back. Uh, he doesn't have biscuits. He's just got his shield. Oh. Yeah, he just got his shield. A little bit of overstep because he decided to keep on trading with Tom Kench and then get eaten and thrown in the tower. Can't do that. You want to die from that one. So, But we have Lee Sing coming back up for gank, it seems. Yeah, he has nowhere to go. He's going to come on, and he's going to dash through him. But there's the Flash trying to eat him. Frosty is taking a bit of damage. Oh, there's the jump in from Lee. The, the minion is not going to do enough. Here comes in Raven, but there's the level three. The dash misses just barely. He's going to throw uh, slow him down just a tad. Good AoE damage coming out. But uh, looks like we're still going to wait for that first blood. Yeah, barely getting away. The Shen failed. Oh, Chaco's actually going oh. in. They're going to try to go over onto uh, uh, Lucian. There comes in the trap. A good uh, headshot as well, thanks to the 90 caliber net. Yeah, there was that abusiveness I was talking about earlier with Caitlyn in her range. She's just poking at this Brahm and Lucian. And even though Lucian and Brahm have such a great early uh, pressure, oh, but there's man. a fight in the mid lane. Yeah, a little bit of a, a trade going on there. One of the things, though, is that Lux is out of mana, so she's got to be a little bit careful now and uh, try to just use the passive on the Doran's Ring to get a bit of mana back. Yeah, just manage her mana a little bit better, and then she can try to all in the Syndra, who now has no potions. What Hawkins can do, then, is he can call in a gank from Gragas. It seems like Syndra's ahead of it. He's calling a gank from Misa. Yeah, here good comes stun. Lee. A good stun. Hawkins flashes away. The Ignite is taken, and that's going to be first blood over to Awesome Nate. Yeah, good stun by Syndra, setting up Lee Sin for success there. As a laner, you should always be trying to set up your jungler for success. And, you know, don't put it all in your jungler to get the gang off. You, the laner, should be trying to get your CC off, since Lee Sin doesn't have any. A little bit of overstep from uh, um, Hawkins, never using his exhaust, trying to reduce the damage, so he dies. 
Yeah, I think at that point it was it, he just kind of knew he was going down. I think that was a good choice to to save it. But uh, you know, you're the diamond guy, and I'm a, a scrub gold, so uh, that's uh, my uh, two cents on that. I mean, you know, it's all right if I'm diamond. I'm still everyone knows <laughs> I'm pretty bad, so it's okay. <laughs> Oh, uh, no, I haven't even done my placement yet this year. I think I'm only, like, five games in, and one of those I didn't even realize. Just randomly, I looked through it, and I got a Jax game. Uh, coming in, though, Chaco does jump in. He's going to get stunned up. Decent amount of damage. Looks like they're going to try to get the Stun of Ron to Jonesy, but we do see a bit of a fight in the jungle. The river, the rubble in the river going on. Ossinator does make sure that everything disengages and that Freedom is able to get out. Yeah, if Raven's Man was on a one-on-one, -on -one, I feel like he could have won it because he had more health and uh, Oh, there abilities. comes in. Uh, Consig actually jumps in. It's a good thing that he's able to bring in that zone of dodge. Uh, otherwise, I mean, he's in the middle of all those minions. That would have been pretty bad. Yeah, I never want to die for fight when you're in the middle of minions because, you know, minions do a lot of damage early game. They do about, in total, like 100 damage, 200 damage. So you want to be fighting when the minions are dead or you clear with them, so... Unfortunate, but he moves on. Shen, Shen can live another day. There's the uh, taunt once again, but it's it's just playing around at this point, it seems. Nobody's really doing too much to each other in the top lane uh, without some jungle pressure. Yeah, they're just, you know, they're just having a tongue fight. I don't know, slap fight, whatever you want to call it. They're just fighting, that's all the are We're just going to call it tonsil hockey from uh, Frosty Dawn. <laughs> and yeah. there is, oh, the hook almost lands. Uh, over onto CJ. Yeah, I do and try by Frosty Choco. Dog does get uh, knocked up. The, the excuse me, the taunt is gonna miss, but here comes in a Lee. Raven does not have any mana to do anything. Gets slowed down. Gonna try to get a little bit of help from VR. Doesn't look like anything going on. One more hit is gonna be able to let him get the uh, stun onto him. Frosty just taking as much damage as he can. Uh, with a great health. Awesome Nader is yeah. coming in. He's going to try to get a stun off. It is going to miss. Throws the ultimate out, and Raven is going to pick up a kill for himself. Yeah, good good uh, estimation of damage from Awesome Nader using his R went after he uh, queued once, so he knows he gets an extra 100 damage. So. It's like they want to keep the pressure up in this top lane. Sindra doing what she can. There is the stun coming off. They try to go in, but a great Beautiful top. stun. Here comes in the final spark. Some good damage from the tower. But it is not enough. They are going to disengage. Yeah. Lucky, lucky, lucky puppies getting some lucky luck on the side. Um, Hawking, if he had hit one binding or maybe an E, he could have killed them. But, you know, like I say, was saying, the luck of puppies got the luck on their side tonight. So, they live. We'll see if that continues on. They are up 2-0 as we hit this uh, eight-minute mark. Not too much of a gold lead going on right now, but... Osmator's chilling to the side. And there comes in the stun. There is another stun over onto VR. He's so low, he's trying to get away, but Frosty Dog is going to pick himself up a kill there. And that is going to be bad news for this top lane. Yeah, that was a good bait by Frosty Dog. He baiting in the Shen because knowing uh, how aggressive Shen has been this entire game, just decided, you know what, I'm going to walk up there. I know Syndra's around. I can be safe. Um, Consig should have known that he should have backed and have been like, you know what, I'm low. It's all right if he gets away. At this level of play, it's recognizing that if you're low, just back off. It's okay. Yeah. They can get away. That's Not what I think going for kills like that. Yeah, it's 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 a lot of problems for a lot of people at, at silver or bronze elo. It's like, you know what, I really want this kill. I want to be the K of the game. And just recognizing, you know what, he got away. I have a CS lead, I can, you know, continually abuse him in this lane. Just walk away, and you're fine. You can come back and kill him later. But we have a fight Chaco, in the ball, Yeah, man. Chaco going in. He's going to get stunned up, though. It takes a half health. Freedom is going to come in. It's going to take away that... Uh, go, go ahead and take away the ward. I don't know if they know that Sintra is here or not. Chaco's coming in. He's going to get stunned up. They jump right on into him. There comes the calling. He has a nice little shield going on. He throws out his ulti. And he almost survives. Shen tries to save him with the final stand, but it is not enough. Sindra throws her ulti out, and that is a dead Nautilus. Yeah, again, Awesome Mater is using his ultimate very well. He understands what how much damage he has. He always throws out a Q beforehand and knows that the Q will add extra damage on his ultimate. So he's swelling out the ultimate after he Qs, and that's a great estimation of like how much damage he can do. Always finishing the kill, just barely, but well enough to kill him. Trying to clear it out. Here comes in Consig. Goes over onto Solomon Grundy. 
but it looks like they're gonna have to back away this uh the cc coming in from Syndra not gonna go in they're just continuing to go in final spark comes out solomon is caught up he's gonna throw a glacial fissure this is not where they want to be lee is coming in jonesy is going to be going down freedom picks himself up a kill raven is still in there trying to go on to freedom but freedom might not be able to get away from this one he's gonna try but here comes in a frosty dog eats a lux one more hit on that, Frosty picks himself up a second kill. This is not looking good for Chaco. He's got two stacks. They're actually going back and forth between Brockus and Chaco. Here comes in Consig once again. Raven is going to get stunned up here in just a minute. This is the man they want to go on now. Takes a lot of damage from a couple of Thunderlords. He's going to spit him on over to Consig. Actually, doesn't even go that far because as soon as he gets spit out, he goes down. There's an Ignite taking on to Consig. Doesn't matter. CJ wants to come in, pick that kill up for himself. 8 to 1 now, just 11 minutes in, and I love a Bloodbath game like this. Yeah, Dragon going to be picked up bloodbath. next, but they don't have a jungler at the moment. Neither side has a jungler there, but uh, Frosty Dog doing a great job of uh, taking this one up with the Grey Health. Final Spark is going to be up in time. It's going to be up in just a couple of seconds. Lux needs to get over there in time to throw out the Final Spark, but here comes in Lee Sin. He's going to jump in, he's going to smite, and that is going to be the Dragon number one over to Lucker Puppies. Yeah, that was a bloodbath of a fight. Um, it was beautiful. Just, <laughs> it was beautiful. Yeah, fighting like no other. Uh, Black Thunder takes a fight in the jungle where they could have just backed off again. That's that like overestimation of damage and you know wanting to get that blood, try to come back. Um, they should have just recognized that you know what, we're gonna lose this fight. Walk away. But it was just, you know, I want to get these kills. And what happened there was Lux didn't land the, the CC that she needed to, you know, make Final Spark work or make her um, Light Binding, you know, Lucent Singularity combo work. She just missed all those spells. So that's a good amount of damage just gone. So she was just, you know, sort of walking around there. And then, you know, tr uh, Tom Ken showed up. It was like, oh, hi. Eats you. <laughs> so, I mean, it was sort of a miscalculation. Um, what they need me to recognize is that even though they're down about seven kills, and this is sort of an ELO problem, I should say. This isn't really a mechanical problem. Is that even though you're down about, you know, seven kills, you're only down about, I should say, it's only about 3K. And that's not a deficit that is, you know, going to make you lose or break a game. It starts to getting around 5K, 6Ks when that gold lead starts to become really... Uh, Dentimental. This is a game that uh, Black Center can still win, and the way they're going to do that is they just need to play safe. They need to recognize that those standing gold. But Hawkins gets stunned. Almost dies. It looks like I'm muted, and I'm not calling a damn thing at this moment. But Grog is going to pick himself up a kill. They're going over onto Freedom now. Man, I paused, I, I muted to cough, and I forgot to unmute. My bad there. Jonesy <laughs> takes a good amount of damage, and uh, they're actually going to throw the calling out. He's going to survive, but they might continue to go in. It and, uh, looks like they had Glacial Fissure. Had they used Glacial Fissure, that would have been a kill for the bottom lane. Yeah, definitely. Um, unfortunate that you were muted, and then unfortunate that the Caitlyn got away. A good try by both the teams. Um, Reason seems to be invading right here. And um, he seems to be getting a pink ward, which is fine by me. But what I was saying earlier <laughs> about playing safe uh, is that you need to, uh, at this elo, recognize that there is uh, standing gold in the tower. So if you kill the towers, you get more gold. But Khan Singh just doesn't oh, want to stop that. No, he he, he's going to get eaten up by Frosty. Dax continue to come out. He's red once again. And it looks like this might be the end. If he can get another stun onto him, that is going to be it. One more auto shot or one more tongue. There's a flash. I don't think he needed to use the flash. He should have just waited, uh, throwing out another tongue shot, and that would have been it. Blue buff now going over onto Awesome Nader. Yeah, Kun Singh is just having one, like, just he's just, he's just wanting to go at him, man. He just wants to go kill, and I'm like, oh, man. This guy is just going at it. He needs to recognize if he just plays safe and uh, uses Shen's ultimate, and you know, helps out his bot lane. You know, you know, helps out his mid lane when he's getting damaged on. Like right oh, now. Oh man, the ignite is ticking, but the shield almost saves him. Yeah, Awesomeate is playing a great game right now, hitting some great stuns and recognizing his damage. He's just abusing Lux, and Chen is just going at Tom Kench. It seems like to be going a very. It's it, this game seems to be going 
fast, vastly into Luck of Puppy's uh, domain of winning. And here comes Lee Sin for a gank. Yeah, but he gets exhausted right away. Waits for it to come on out. They're going over onto Chaco. They're going to get the stun. He actually flashes away. Oh, a nice good barrel. barrel coming out and a beautiful hook. Chaco picks that one up, unfortunately. They're going over onto Solomon and it's CJ. Here comes in the Drunken Rage. It looks like CJ might be able to get away from this one. It looks like both of them are going to be able to get away from this one. Yeah, that was a beautiful barrel from Gragas. Just using that range and hitting Leeson back into the tower, followed up by Nautilus uh, hook. That just was a beautiful, beautiful play by Lum. And it seems like Awesome is almost oh! the boundaries. Thankfully, that tower, I'm pretty sure that uh, Lux would have picked that one up anyways. A good binding by Hawkins. Yeah, definitely a good binding by Hawkins. And now what the flip side is that that Lucka Puppy needs to understand, like I was saying earlier, that Black Thunder was behind and tried to play safe. They need to understand that they're ahead and they should play safe and not give kills back. They need to recognize that, oh, we're ahead. Let's just team up and group and fight and not lose a lead that we have. But um, this is why we're here to teach you guys that is because when you're ahead and if you just back off from stuff like, you know, you don't get caught behind minions or you just recognize that you're low and you back off and just continually snowball your lead, you'll eventually win games a lot easier than if you play aggressively or try to fight in situations you can't. Oh, Freedom man. Eagle comes in. Yeah, hits a Q. He's going to knock him back with his ulti. Good binding by Hawkins. I, I like what he did there as well. He put the... Uh, Oh, actually, we got to fight up at the top lane. I'll go back to that in just a second. Frosty Dog is going to eat Jenny. Throws him towards the tower. It's not far enough, though. Uh, it does look like Freedom now is going to get uh, hit up with the final spark. But everyone's just going to kind of be able to back away from this one now as we hit the 17-minute mark. And that gold lead has just diminished so far down to a two, uh, 2k gold lead. Yeah, if uh, Black Thunder starts getting these towers, or as Lucky Puppy is starting getting these towers, you will see that gold lead inflate or deflate, depending on who gets it first. Uh, it seems like mid lane, Lucky Puppies might get that too soon, but also for Lucky Puppies turret, it's very low too. So we'll have to see what happens. Turrets are very, I think they're about worth about three kills, about 600 gold each, about 150 spread across all the players. So it's a lot of gold just jumping into your pockets all of a sudden. So we'll see what happens there. Um, what I think Lucky Puppy should do now is recognize that they should go for dragons. But there seems to be a fight. Ravenmen coming in. Yeah, they want to hit onto CJ. Good job by dashing at the right point. Awesomeator does start to go in. He's got a little bit of magic resist, though, which is going to help him out just a tad. But they're going right on in. Good job pushing him away, though. Yeah, good E from uh, Syndra. Using her Scatter of the Week just to push him away, not get slammed into the wall. Now they're gonna, well, like I was saying, Lucky Puppy should start thinking about getting this uh, dragon, and they're thinking about it, they're using the wards, trying to clear out, you know, whenever you want to start a dragon, you want to make sure there's no vision on it, you want to make sure that you have vision control to see whose people are coming in, and then you start the dragon. So then you can take fights you want, or you can recognize you need to flee and run away. So that's what they're doing now. Raven Man looks to fight like he wants to fight Lee Sin. No, he just wants to pass. He wants to get his vassals. Yeah, he needed to just kind of... Go ahead and uh, get away from that one. But yeah, Dragon is up. I'm surprised neither team has started to posture for this one. It is something uh, that really both teams can use very well at this moment. Uh, Black Thunder needs their first one, and we're heading towards that 20-minute mark uh, where people are starting to have more items, and that just becomes such a more important thing to have that first Dragon. Yeah, definitely. You know, having that uh, first Dragon um, gives you that 6% damage on AP and AD damage, um, it just, it lets you have more stats that are more effective in combat, and that's what you really need, but the second dragon now is really good, Raven Man gets stunned. Yeah, he's uh, fairly tanky at this point, uh, he did go down the uh, resolve tree, so he's got some extra tankiness to him right now. Yeah, just walks away. He's like, I'm, you know, I'm good. You don't need to worry about me. He just walks away. <laughs> but um, what I was trying to say, second dragon's really important right now. It gives you a turret burn that allows you to get these turrets that I've been saying. You know, so we're so Oh, man, goal, they're actually but... going right on in. Raven is coming in. CJ gets ulted. He's oh, going to nice get popped ultimate. back right now. That kill goes over to Jonesy. Much needed, but Hawkins going down right now. Uh, uh, Freedom did not need to be there. They're going to get this uh, middle tower, but it does look like... Uh, Blue Thunder is going to start heading towards Dragon. Blue Thunder, Black Thunder. Black Thunder, jeez, man. <laughs> no way. It's been a long day, okay? Uh, it's okay. I just want to make sure that you realize that, you know, Blue Thunder does not exist. I, it's Blue you know Lightning. What, it's, 
it, it's funny because it's blue lightning. There we go. Yeah. Uh, no, it's funny because I have like notes written down. I see I'm looking at Black Thunder on my second screen right now, and I'm still screwed up. Uh, but it does look like uh, two towers go to the side of Lucker Puppies, but Black Thunder are going to go ahead and pick themselves up a dragon. It looks like they're going to try to get as much damage as they can onto this mid tower now. Yeah, and like I said earlier about those uh, standing gold, from getting just those two towers, uh, Lucker Puppies gets about a 4k gold lead. That's about 1.2 because of the two towers. So they walk away with a good amount. But then in response, they, uh, Black Thunder does get Dragon, and he does get his the tower. So they do deflate it again. But Lucker Puppies still has a commanding uh, lead over this game. So we'll have to see what happens with Black Thunder. They've been using the Shen ulti very well. They've been trying to use the bot lane and, you know, use that advantage I was talking about, the 4v2 ganks or the 3v2 ganks, so we'll have to see what uh, Lucky Puppy wants to do in response. Like, uh, their response is this bottom tower. <laughs> oh my god. Sorry, Red Eye's giving me crap in uh, team speak at the moment because of my terrible quirky game yesterday. Uh, a couple of uh, pink, t uh, pink war is going to be taken out. It looks like they're going to get this third tower of the game in the bottom. They're trying to come in. Actually, some good clear coming out from the final spark. They might just try to go ahead and uh, tank this one out. They got a couple of minions left at least. They are going over onto Frosty Dog now. He's got his uh, great health though. CJ gets exhausted. Frosty Dog trying to get away from this one. Raven gonna try to come in as fast as he nice can, point. but from, uh, from behind is Kinsig. DJ does get hit away. Raven Smart is going to flash in on this one. Everything coming out from everyone at this point. Glacial Fissure not doing too much as CJ gets a second exhaust put on him. They go into Raven Smart. He gets stunned up, but a great uh, a dash coming in from Kinsig. Looks like this is going to be a, uh, what, three for two, three for three coming in from both teams. Freedom is now in. He's helping out quite a bit. Chaco going to be going down next, and that is going to be an ace for two eventually. There it is, finally. Triple kill coming out uh, for Freedom. And that is 16 to 7 now at the 22 minute mark. Yeah, Freedom did some great work right there. Using his Q, he hit his Q on a very key targets on Caitlyn, on Lux, and just, you know, was knocking them all around. That's why that fight looked so messy, is because both the back lines were getting stomped on while the tanks were stomping each other. And in the back line, it was just messy. It was a messy fight. But Freedom, using his calculations correctly, uh, I should say using his skills correctly and hitting the targets that needed to be hit. Lux and Caitlyn recognizing that they need to die first. So he went for them, killed the Lux, then went for Caitlyn, killed her off. Good play by Freedom Eagle, moving on from there. Um, now it's a 5k gold lead and this is starting to get out of hand for Black Thunder. Yeah, this is the moment that they've kind of been waiting for. You know, you, you mentioned before, once you get kind of towards that 5k gold lead, things start to snowball just a little bit easier. And that looks like that's where they're at right now. They're up three towers to one. Uh, so many extra kills, so many extra items. Uh, as we see Blue Buff now getting taken over by Awesome Nader. But uh, man, yeah, this is this is the point of the game where things are going to just get out of hand even further. Yeah, it's one of it's it's this point in the game where Lucky Puppies need to recognize that they are ahead, and if they want to win this game, they just need to play safe and play correctly, get wards in the enemy jungle, get deep vision to know what the ha what's happening with the enemy team, and move accordingly, like if they're bot side, get a ban, and if the top side, get a bottom turret. And they just use the abusive, like, you know, uh, use the gold lead that it translations, uh, translates Ooh. into stats. Ooh, missing the jump over the wall there. Raven, bro, we saw that. Raven, man, it's okay, though. You, you're is. still loved here. You're still loved. Oh, man, I screw up my, my stuff all the time. It does look like uh, Raven is going to get eaten up, though. He's going to have some help now from Freedom. But here comes in the rest of Black Thunder. Raven going to be able to get away. It looks like Freedom is in trouble now. He goes fairly low. He might be able to get away from this one. The ulti comes out from Grog. Is the exploding cast not enough? The culling is not enough as well to get onto Raven Spark. And it looks like Frosty wants to go in, but he doesn't have the rest of his team with him right now. Yeah, that was really, really iffy for Lucker Puppies. Those are the kind of things you don't want to happen. You just want to, you know, make your gold lead bigger. You don't want to be taking 4v2 fights. That just doesn't end well for you. So, they disengage very well, but they need to recognize they shouldn't be doing that at all. They just need to be grouped as a team, or use their advantage and push a lane. Start sieging the lanes and making, you know, uh, Black Thunder's life really hard just trying to get gold or just, you know, fighting them. So, we see a flank from Jakonsing, though. Yeah, he tried to go in, but not much going on there. Here comes in a Frosty Dog. 
can Sig might get eaten right here. They're actually going to go ahead and get a couple of knockups there, thanks to a great scatter of the week. Uh, but also comes in from the uh, ulti from Chaco, the Depth Charge. That's the right one. Final Spark comes out. CJ's got to get away from that one. But it doesn't look like they have the damage right now. But Jonesy gets caught out from Freedom. He's going down. There's the one kill for him, finally, as they continue to push this advantage. Yeah, Freedom's just playing very well right now. He's finding the targets they need to find, and Caitlyn is over on the side trying to snipe someone in. You know, when you're sniping, you can't give away your position like that. We all know this, so Freedom recognizes that, finds him, kills him. Good play by Freedom. But, yeah, um, I mean, he's, he, there, there's a missing Lee Sin, and you're in the wrong side of the jungle, especially with, with uh, Lucker Puppies pushed up so far and gets caught out. Yeah, it, it, it was just trying to, you know, be cheeky. He wants to snipe, you know, from, from, he wants to be Jin, basically. Yeah. He just wants to snipe. Can't do so, that, though. He tried. He tried. Yeah. We are 26 minutes into this game now as uh, Dragon number three, well, excuse me, Dragon number, yeah, those will be Dragon, Dragon number, what, what number this will be Dragon number two. Okay, number two, I just one we were at three. That's not the case. Raven is around the other side, though. They're actually going to pull it out. That's a smart thing. That's something I, I complain to my teams about all the time. This is something I want to give them props for. When you're the other team is behind the wall like that, you got to pull that dragon out. I yell at my teammates all the time for it. Uh, you you just got to pull them out. Great job uh, by Lugger Puppies doing that, making sure that they can't steal it. Yeah, recognizing that, you know, Gracchus can come over and steal this dragon from us, and it's important, so let's just, you know, wait. Wait for the barrel to time out, wait for everything to go, and then pull out and do it. Like you were saying, that's a really smart move, and it shows that these guys are learning. That they're learning from, you know, past mistakes they may have happened. They may have had, you know, a Gracchus come over the wall and steal it. But as we rec just recognized that they were doing a uh, dragon, uh, Black Thunder moves immediately toppling to get this turret. And I think they should have gone to Baron. That's just me, because I feel like they're behind. But, you know, those are the risky plays that when you're behind, you want to take to try to win. But if they stay too uh, long top lane, they might lose a lot of things, so they need to recognize that uh, Luck of Puppies is pushing mid, and they need to go back quickly. Yeah, everyone is up in the top lane. I mean, this is just the perfect opportunity uh, for Luck of Puppies to come on in on this one. It looks like they're going to pick up this tower. Nobody around just yet. They're going to, I mean, a couple of them are going through the jungle. Uh, looks like they might push over, maybe just get this red buff, or maybe start to siege onto the bottom tower. We'll see where that goes, as they do uh, go ahead and... Uh, my apologies. Anyway, so it looks like they are going to go ahead and start trying to uh, push over onto this bottom tower. They got the damage, they got the items. Looks like it is time to siege, but there's a good amount of wave clear coming out uh, from Black Thunder. The hook does miss, they're trying to stun him up. One more shot is going to do it. It's not enough. A trap is going to come out. A couple of good traps that's going to keep Lee on the wrong side of that wall. They continue to try coming back for it. And it looks like uh, they just don't really have anything. I think it's time to go ahead and back out from this one. Go back and spend the gold that they have. Start trying to push the advantage somewhere else. Yeah, they're going to have to, you know, recognize that they can't siege on the Caitlyn. Can't siege on the Lux. Oh, get it. Great fight. Oh man, here comes in that beautiful final spark. Here comes in the Glacial Fissure though, trying to stop them all up. It's not going to be enough. CJ has to flash away, but there comes in the flash from Chaco. He's pretty low himself, but a good stun on the CJ thanks to the passive. CJ picks one up. He's trying to do the best that he can. Raymond goes fairly low, but they have all caught up to him, and that is going to be a great kill picked up for Gragas. Fossey trying to get away now, that annoying gray health. It comes over to a regular shield now. A taunt, at, a taunt comes out now. Who's going to pick this one up? And it looks like Jonesy. Good job. We'll pass that over to your AD carry. Yeah, good job passing it off, recognizing that you need to give your goal to someone that's going to try to make you carry. But let's just say, that was a great, great binding from Lux. Hitting the key target, Syndra, and hitting the other key target, I think it was Lucian, but basically binding up the two carries on Lucky Puppy's side, and then immediately ulting and bursting them down to some, like, really low health. I don't remember, it was like 200, something like that. It was a really good play by Hawking. So another tower picked up, and this lead just kind of going in the opposite direction. They were up by 5k. They're only up by uh, about 1.5 now. So great job by Black Thunder. 
Yeah, coming black, in. Uh, we, black we, uh, are not tilting, which is no, good not at all. Uh, we have somebody asking about the uh, in, in chat uh, about the uh, gold stats right now. Uh, it does look like uh, Shen at 9.5k, Gragas uh, 9.5, 9k for Lux, 10.3k uh, for Kate, and 7.5k for Nautilus. Over on the other side, uh, Tom has about 10k. Ten, uh, oh man, actually take that back for a second. VR can sig. Uh, is trying to do what he can, keeping freedom occupied. He gets knocked back the wrong way. Frosty Dog does come in, but VR, uh, excuse me, uh, Freedom is going to get knocked up. Frosty Dog in the wrong place, flashes over the wall. He's going to get away uh, from the uh, hook right there. Well, we have a second once again. Uh, just to let everyone know about the uh, gold right now. Uh, 10K for Tom, uh, 11K for Lee, 10.5 for Sintra, uh, 10K for uh, 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 Lucian and 7k coming in for Brawl. Yeah, the gold lead was in favor of Luckapuck, like we were saying earlier, but now since they, were, they got, uh, well, Black Thunder got such a great fight earlier, and all these Oh, uh, Hoko, we're on to Solomon. He throws a shield out, though. That's going to save him. It looks like they have the opportunity to get a bit of damage down, but here comes in Frosty. Might try to just continue going in. He actually gets pulled in, but here comes in Solomon to try and save him. He gets knocked up. Final Spark coming out. And that's another kill over to Jonesy, just the the one person you don't want to give kills to right now. But meanwhile, in the bottom lane, they got a split pushing Syndra. It looks yeah. like they're not going to be able to get this tower <laughs> in the mid lane, but they're just trying to do what they can to stall this out. It does look yeah. like Freedom is going to get caught with the binding, but this might be the opportunity for the team to back out from this one now. Yeah. Being bottom at Syndra, I don't know if that's the right call in my decision. I mean, they did get the turret. I feel like if she was with the team, they would have gone a little bit better, but you know what? They did defend the tower. They did get a bottom tower, so it's all right, I guess. But you know, now this lead that they did have, which was you know a, a commanding 6k gold lead, they now only have about one and a half, maybe 500 gold lead on this. So we'll have to see what they can do about this. Yeah, but they're going on to Frosty. He does get pulled back. Close the shield. He's going to be going down. Who's that going over to? Jonesy now picking up another kill. 5-3-5 five, and five, just in time for Dragon to come up. And this is going to be a very important second Dragon uh, coming in for Black Thunder. Yeah, and just like that, the gold lead is dwindling and dwindling and dwindling. And, you know, what I was saying earlier about Luck of Puppies is when you have the lead, you just want to group. You want to make sure you put on a pressure and not, you know be panicking like this. What's happening right now is Lucky Puppies are trying to scramble back to get to gain the footing and recognizing that your footing is gone right now and just, you know what, our footing is gone. Let us just group up, make sure that we're grouped as five and have our tanks in front and just try to fight them one of five on five or just let, uh, have them tower dive us like they've been doing us and just, you know, move around the map in a way that your team is together. But they're not doing that. They're doing these flanks and it's just not working out because they keep on getting caught there's a flash coming away. in from Freedom. Depth charge, not gonna be too much there, but at least it backs the team off. Yeah, it gets away the important least in flash, so you mean you can't do the, lead, the Q uh, R, uh, mechanical skill where you nick, uh, knock someone back into the team, so. I would say it's worth. Oh, minion block makes him take a couple of extra shots. They're coming around the backside on this. This might not be good. Here comes in a final spark and it's kick. free, but there is a beautiful kick as well as the glacial fissure. In comes Awesome Nader. He gets exhausted. Hawking is uh, does have a couple of shields on him now. They are continuing to stay on to this Run away. Uh, front line. Chaco is doing what he can, but he is uh -oh. so low. He gets eaten up now. He's going to hold on to it. He's dead as soon as he gets spit out. VR can sig. Uh, does get hit with the Q. He's going to jump in on that with him. Here comes in the, the great zone to make for the dodges. He needs one more attack, and that is going to be all she wrote for Shen. Get split out. Yeah, that was a good oh, fight. Oh, maybe not GG. Awesome I'm not trying to say it like that. <laughs> not like that, but good fight. Good fight from Freedom. Kicking the Lux again. He's showing up really well right now. He's making his... He's pretty much putting the, the team on his back. He says, follow me, team. Kicks in the right targets. Kicks in, you know, making beautiful kicks. So it's up to him right oh, now. Oh, man. The Sullivan needs to get out of there. This was not a good Baron call. They tried, but uh, just uh, not the right opportunity. Yeah, it was a good try, you know. When you're behind like this, well, I mean, when you make the game so even like this, I should say, well, they were ahead. <laughs> you got to take you gotta take some chances. I mean, it was a good chance. They did kill three people. Um, then, you know, they knew Gragas was low, so it was a good call.
Uh, unfortunately, Lux made that, you know, a little bit, a little bit on the close side, almost killing the support. So they have to back off. Yeah, between hitting the final spark and uh, uh, go ahead and, and tanking Baron, it was not good. He got out of there. I mean, it, it, I kind of love seeing games like this. 21 kills to 13, but basically a, a tie game at this point as it comes to the gold lead. Yeah, this game is very close in the gold lead, even though it was such a luck place with such a commanding lead. So it'll be a lot of fun for them. Or oh, trying to come back again, I should say. But they get the blue buff stolen. That's something you want happening. Yeah, that one went over to Jonesy. I really would have preferred to see that on Hawkins. Yeah, well, we'll have to see. We'll have to see what happens now. I mean, he's been doing great, though. I mean, he's he, he had a rough early game, comes back. He's gotten a couple kills lately, and it uh, looks like they're going to go over onto Frosty now, but the hook misses, so they decide not to go in. Uh, Lisa and Q misses as well. Yeah, um... They're just looking for a fight, and I don't oh, agree with this. Oh, the actually lands over onto Freedom now. Chaco's got to make sure not to get stunned up. Here comes in Awesomeator. Everything is being blown right now. Final Spark doesn't really hit anybody. Chaco is going to take out Awesomeness, though. Freedom goes in. Frosty Dog is going in as well. There comes in the Glacial Fisher finally and hits onto two, but the rest of the team is not there. They're getting taken over by VR and Sig. CJ finally picks him up, but it does look like Brom going down himself now. It's time for this team to back out. Frosty Dog uh, does need to watch out himself. He gets knocked up. Grey Health ain't going to save you from this one. He throws the shield, but he gets hit by a binding. Hockey picks himself up a kill, and this is going to be an inhibitor. Yeah, that was a good fight for Black Thunder, even though it didn't look like it was going in their favor at first. But they hit a great final spark on the Syndra, killing him immediately, and then having the Nautilus, uh, well, I shouldn't say killing immediately, but Nautilus as uh, ultimate killing her, making that damage just gone. So it was a very good fight for them. Um, the only problem I have right now is Freedom keeps on wanting to fight. And this is the issue when you're behind, is you just want to, you know, let it go. It's fine. Don't fight. Don't fight. Just try to be safe. And this is just not happening at all. They're not, they, they, they can't hear me, but, you know, this is something they need to recognize. Is when you're ahead, group. When you're behind, try to play safe and get a lead and make capitalize on the mistakes. And that's what Black Thunder did very well. They capitalized on the mistakes of Lucker Puppies and gain this gold lead back uh, slowly but surely. And now they're in the lead. They'll lead about 2k. And so uh, now it's up to Lucker Puppies to do the same game that Black Thunder was doing the first 25 minutes in this game. So we'll have to see if they can pull it off. They have the opportunity up now, uh, 2k gold, the first lead we've seen for them. But, you know, we're at uh, about 40 minutes into this game now. Uh, 2k gold is absolutely nothing. It comes down to teamwork at this point. Yeah, and I think Lucker Puppies, in my opinion, has been showing some really good teamwork. Freedom especially, using his kicks on the correct targets, and Braum using his ultimates very well. There was a chance in that last fight in the corridor that they were uh, running through uh, next to the blue buff where he could have ultimated and hit four. He just didn't pull the trigger. He pulls it later, but it wasn't as good because they're not, you know, they're not on the slow anymore and they're not grouped up. So unfortunate there, but um, these two guys have been showing up really well. They've been using their abilities just incredibly well. But I have to say, Revian Man on Gragas has been showing some great ultimates, hitting the key targets back into the team. And then also uh, Lux hitting some good final sparks in the entire team. So these guys have been showing up, both of these guys. Both teams kind of around the same area. It does look like uh, the red team is going to come from behind. They go right on over to Raven. Ooh, They're going to kick him kick. back. This is not looking good. But a great ulti is going to pull him back. He flashes in. He's trying to save his AD carry, but he's getting hit up by Freedom. Final Spark is going to miss. Uh, VR can say does get hit back. They're going on to Solomon now. He is fairly low. He pulls the shield out. They're doing what they can. Glacial Fisher finally comes out. And it hits three of them. Awesome, Nader, with a great uh, scatter of the week. Gonna go ahead and pick up two there. And this might be a good opportunity to uh, just kind of turn around and go for Parrot. What a bloody game we got going on. But it's I gotta beautiful. Say, it's, a, it's a good game. They're hitting Awesomeator, is hitting some great ultimates. Braum, like I was saying earlier, hitting some great, um, I should say, Glacier Fissures, and just to lock down the team from going, and then scatter the weak follow-up from Awesomeator. It's just, it's a beautiful thing to watch, especially at this ELO, because you don't see that often, and it just shows how much these guys have worked in their teamwork and their communication. So it's great to see. Um, I guess for Black Thunder, it was just a bad fight. They got Gragas initiated on and kicked into the team. And unfortunately, 
for them, but we'll have to see if they can also come back, because they still have a good gold lead, but the game is getting closer and closer. It's just good, like you said, it's going to be all about the teamwork, about what they do. See if this dragon can get hit. There's Jonesy. He's going to jump right on in. Final spark, plus a, uh, a nice fed Jonesy at this point with some great CS, uh, as well as six kills. Picks up the third dragon of the game. Yeah, I, didn't know why, I don't know why Lee Sin walked away there, though. He got smite. He should have just stayed there and be like, you know, I can take it. I'm tanky enough. It's at 800, and his smite at this moment does about 900 damage. Um, at level 18, is 850. He could have killed it. I don't know why he walked away. He's the jungler. He just, just took it. You know, I, I understand where he was coming from. He didn't want to die. He understands that his team uh, really needs him at this point. You, death timers at 40 minutes are, are pretty long, but... Uh, you know, in the end, uh, Dragon number three, yeah, the move speed is nice, but uh, I, I would personally rather have a uh, Lee Sin that's not dead. That's true, that's true. You know, recognizing that if he dies, the game might end, walks away. Smart move in hindsight from him, but um, I still think he could have took it. But that's just, you know, me being greedy. I guess that's, <laughs> you know, this just a little bit of the, the, the greed out of my voice coming out. But um, look, it looks like Lucky Puffy is going to make a move on a Baron. He seems to be cleaning up the wards and trying to bait that. And it seems like this is what I was talking about earlier. If they have vision on the Gragas, the Nautilus, the Caitlyn, and the Lux, they should recognize that they're pushing bot lane. They should just go for Baron. Take it right now. Everyone is bot lane. You can just burst it immediately and then go back and save your tower. But they seem to be not wanting to do that. Tom Kench and Brahm in the middle lane. And then Syndra and Lee Sin are just sort of goofing around in the top lane. They need to back it immediately or they're going to lose their inhibitor bottom. Yeah, they're just going to go ahead and tank this one out. Here comes in a Tom Kench, though. They lock him up almost immediately. Awesome Nate are having a bit of trouble up in the top lane. Solomon Grundy does get hit with the binding. It looks like Awesome Nader throws down his Zanyas, but he's going to die as soon as he comes back up. Tries to scatter the weak. That's a kill for VR Kinsig. Here comes in a final spark. It does hit a couple of guys, but the one they're going for, it doesn't do too much on right now as Frosty Dog stays alive. He does have, oh my gosh, great play by Freedom Eagle. Jonesy does pick himself up a double kill before going down. Oh, Freedom does get locked up, though, and that is going to be another kill. There's the ace, and there is... Uh, game right now. They're gonna go over to the mid. They probably should have just gone ahead and taken the bottom tower and taken that inhibitor and just continued to push on as they have minions over there. And the team just needs to go over to the play. Just go to the, the bottom. Bottom. They'll eventually get there. They're killing it. They're killing it. Ah, there it goes. So now they're gonna go try to win the game. I think this is game. Just a misstep from Lucka Puff. He's not recognizing that, you know, they needed to move faster and they didn't move fast enough. They sort of split up, had two people go in. They died, and then two more people came in, they died, and Syndra got soloed in the top lane. So good game for Black Thunder, making a comeback from a 5k deficit. Yeah, great job. Good teamwork by uh, by Black Thunder. It looks like they're going to take this best of one. They pull on Awesome Nader. Don't get the kill onto him, though. That is going to be game one. Heading over to Black Thunder. Yeah, We good are going to be getting... Go for it. Oh, okay. I was going to say, just good game for Black Thunder. Playing from behind, recognizing that they were behind, so they played smart and they made great picks in the early game and the mid game just to make a comeback. So, good game from Lum, uh, and a good game from Lucka Puppies in the early game. They just need to recognize they need to group earlier, and they could probably finish that game out a lot more solid. All right, well, we are gonna collect our thoughts, get some water, use the restroom, do what we got to do. We'll be back with game two in just a minute.
ahead and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, game number two of this best of two. This time around, we got Black Thunder over on the red side, so hopefully I won't be calling them Blue Thunder once again. Uh, Lucker Puppies uh, over on the blue side. Black Thunder up 1-0 in this one, and immediately Shen going to be taken away. Yeah, Shen was definitely a really strong pick for them last game. Um, at least Black Thunder was. At least it was for Black Thunder. Gosh, now I'm getting assembly. But um, yeah, it was definitely a good pick. Uh, Malphite getting banned out of the second pick. As we all know, Malphite is click R, win the game. Just hit an ultimate and you sort of blow up anyone on the team. So, ban him out. Then we get rid of Fiora too. Fiora is a, another, like we were saying earlier, great ban because of the split pushing. Um, you know, have you have you ever played against Fiora as Fiora? I think she's a interesting champion, I should say. No, I, I suck, so I tend to go with uh, less mechanically fine champion. I mean, she's not that hard. Yeah, but I suck at this game, so oh, well, I'm just don't say go. that. Hey man, hey man, we'll get you Bro. in Academy League. We'll get you better. You know what? I do plan on, on playing in Academy League next season. No, let me tell you, I'm, I'm a lot better than I used to be before we get back to, to these picks and bans. Here's how bad I used to be. I've been playing this game since preseason one. You want to know how low my ELO was back then? I want to say like 500. A little bit more than that. But you're not far off. I was in the 600s. I was, was actually too. So it's See, okay. and you know what? You're diamond now. I'm, you know, I. I I, I made it to gold five last season, but uh, I think I played like 20 something games, got to gold and called it quits and just went to normals. But uh, bands are done. Shen, Fiora, uh, Udir, Malphite, Syndra, Lucian, and we do have a Ezreal locked in. Yeah, Ezreal, as we were knowing, was banned last game, and this time it's picked up. Um, if anyone's been playing solo queue or normal games at all, or just playing League of Legends, they should know that right now Ezreal is the best ADC in the game because of blue Ez and just the cost efficiency of what it does and just a lot of other factors factoring in that it's such a great pick overall so they first pick that it's a good first pick and in response they pick a Nami and a Volibear and a Volibear yeah I'm not sure about the Volibear here because the Volibear um it is sort of like you sort of run at people it's sort of like Udia and then you stun them or you flip them back into your team um, but it's Ezreal, you can't really do that. He will always have his E or run away, but we seem to have left the game. Uh, we'll find out what's going on with that with uh, just a second, as uh, we do apologize for this delay. Uh, but uh, man, you know what? I just love seeing Ezreal in, in a game. I'm a, uh, looks like a wrong champ was uh, We'll go back to this in just a second. I'm not sure which one it was. Let's see here. Looks like apparently the Nami wasn't uh, supposed to be picked, but uh, uh, we'll see. I don't know how the rules go. If they have any disputes, we'll uh, go ahead and uh, let admins deal with this. But uh, no, man. So, uh, so like I was telling the players at this game and you guys just a minute ago, so uh, uh, I, I had somebody come and yell at me because I'm uh, being a little bit too loud. They're getting tired of my yelling. So... Uh, <laughs> That'll be uh, fun to deal with. But I'm getting out of here in a week. Like, literally a week from tomorrow, I move into my new place. I'm currently in this tiny one-bedroom apartment uh, that I paid 400 bucks a month for. I hate it here. The walls are thin. It is annoying. It's crap. Uh, but I get my own two-bedroom house that I'm moving into. And I have to apologize because I know my sound quality is terrible. I have, like, 20-foot ceilings. I'm going to get an actual place with a regular ceiling, which is going to be just, just beautiful. I'm going to love it. I'm going to love it. So uh, I'm done stalling, it looks like. Um, <laughs> good stall. Good stall. We'll I'm, talk about, you know, your 20-foot ceiling some other time. I know that's you know so what, interesting. Dude, I, I'm used to just filling up time. You know, for, for anybody watching, I've told you guys, uh, my day job, the reason why I'm DJ Darkling D is because my day job is uh, I'm a radio DJ. That's what I do. I have my own morning show at a, a small little classic hit station. But uh, uh, so I'm used to being able to just kind of fill time and just talk about nothing for as long as I need to. I mean, that's a good trait. I mean, I could do that, but I, I don't know. It wouldn't work very well. I'd talk about something random and probably league-related or talk about my dog. I mean, you have my a dog. dog. What good. kind of dog do you have? My dog is a cockapoo. So he's a cocker spaniel and a poodle. And he, he's a fluffy dog. <laughs> Sleeps with me all the time. And he's like 20 pounds, so he's a great dog. He's a good-sized dog. But we're back in game. So. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, the, uh, I don't know if we're going to get the same picks and bans. I hope we do. Uh, somebody's asking, 
what radio station. I won't give you my radio station because I once did that while I was uh, casting Go For Lol. Uh, we were on the front page of Twitch. We had about uh, 3,000 people watching. Uh, this is back when I was good and not rusty as hell like I am now. But uh, uh, unfortunately, I gave the radio station I was at. And uh, it looks like the same bands, but the NAMI is going to be a Nautilus. Um, I, I gave the radio station I was at at the time. And unfortunately, the next day during my shift, I was doing the afternoon show. I got about, I don't know, 40, 50 calls for a Sandstorm. Oh boy, that's a mistake right there. It was a country station. So obviously we don't uh, have that one. But, uh, oh boy. Yeah, it was it was GG. I, uh, I almost got fired for that one. <laughs> Whatever, I hated that place anyways. I just, good God. Hey, you're moving on to bigger Vegas things, so it's all right. Swifty, we're talking about nothing, bro, while we get back into things. So, there we go. We're finally back to where we were uh, before uh, everyone uh, got out of there. So, it is supposed to be the Nautilus, not the Nami. But we still get the Volley Bear, so I'm excited to see a little bit of a change from what we're always seeing. Yeah, Volley Bear, in my opinion, against Ezreal is not that great. But, I mean, if you have any other ADC, like, for example, Lucian or Corky, you run with Volibear at them, and then you flip them into your team, and you say, here, here, team, take them, kill them right now. <laughs> so Volibear is really good at that. But Ezreal is just known to being slippery because he has that innate um, E, which is his flash. I like to call it flash, but it's called, uh, Arcane I don't shift. remember. Arcane Shift, thank you. Didn't remember, but he does have Arcane Shift, so he has a flash away. So for, uh, Volibear, it's really hard for him to get close enough without Ezreal flashing away and just getting away. So I don't know if it's the correct pick here, but with maybe the Nautilus, they can not uh, lock down Ezreal long enough that they can get the Volibear in there and just to flip him in the team. You're like, here you go. So we'll have to see what happens there. And then a Vine and Braum getting locked in. So maybe this will counteract what they were thinking about Nautilus and Volibear going at the Ez. Yeah, we'll see how that works out. We saw, uh, uh, we've seen quite a bit of Braum today. I think he's been actually in all, those will make four games in a row that we've seen him uh, throughout the games tonight. Uh, but uh, we, we've, this will be the second game tonight that we're seeing uh, of Vi. The first game, uh, I think it was a game two of the first best of two, uh, just didn't work out. It didn't, or maybe game one, I don't know. Either way, it just didn't create the pressure that it needed. Uh, with Vi, as soon as you hit six, I mean, you just need to be a ganking that. So hopefully uh, Freedom can maybe turn it around just a little bit. Yeah, um, Freedom has been showing that he's been very good at recognizing who needs to kill and all that stuff. So it's a good pick by him, the Vi is at least, just to say, you know what, I'm going to pick one guy out of this entire team and kill him. So instead of killing two people, he's going to kill one. Vi is a good pick for that. I still think his Lee Sin might have been good here against Volibear because you can kick Volibear away too. But I guess they just want to hard initiate this time and just go at him and kill him. All right, so. we'll see. Uh, one thing we do want to point out uh, is that uh, the reason the Nami came in is because there was a disconnect. Chaco disconnected and was given the uh, uh, the Nami at random. So uh, it, it wasn't some misclick with lock in. It was actually, unfortunately, a disconnect. So they are going to go ahead and let them uh, repick and get his Nautilus that he was supposed to get. So uh, we do see now the Jinx and the Lulu coming in, and Frosty Dog played a great game last game uh, on the Tom Kench. We'll see what uh, Awesome Nader is going to bring into this. I, I would like to see the Cat, but I don't think it's a good pick here. I think Cat versus Lulu is an interesting matchup because what depends on happening is Lulu will push in the Cat, and then eventually when team fights start rolling in, she'll be useless, but if she gets two kills, she just absolutely starts to stopping the Lulu. It really is an interesting matchup because Lulu versus Katarina, but it doesn't need to be Katarina. Scratch everything I just said. It's gonna be Cassiopeia, and I think that's a 10 times more better matchup against Lulu because you can stun Lulu before she can ultimate and kill her immediately. So, scratch whatever I just said, because Cassiopeia, <laughs> the correct pick in my opinion against um, the team composition that Black Thunder is making, but also I just want to say, Black Thunder's composition is a go at you, I want to be facing you composition. And what I mean by facing is Cassiopeia can click R and just immediately stun everyone in place. The Volibear, Nautilus, Lulu, Jinx, the Graves that they lock that in. So it's going to be really hard for that team to initiate without facing Cassiopeia because she's just going to be immediately like, hey, you, you can't move. And then the team can follow up and kill them. So we'll have to see if Awesome Nader can pull it off for one. And then we'll have to see if Black Thunder can outplay Awesome Nader. 
see what they pick. Uh, they've, they've hovered over a couple of different champions. It looks like they're going back to the Graves. Uh, and Graves is going to be locked in. So we have our lanes. Like Graves heading up into the top lane. It is going to be the uh, the mid Lulu. I wasn't expecting that. I really thought they were going to send that up top. Yeah, I think Lulu versus Tom Kench is a good matchup for Lulu. But I mean, that's what Lulu is for, right? It's you can flex it any way you sort of wanted to go. You can go support, oh, yeah. you can go top, and go mid. So it's definitely a good pick. Just recognizing, you know what? We want Lulu to have. I mean, we want a uh, uh, concept to be on not a tank but a K this time, and just start trying to stomp out Tom Kench. But I mean. It's hard, man. Tom Kench is one of those guys you just not, cannot kill. So, yeah. Unfortunately, we'll have to see what happens. It's going to be, again, about the team fights, about what they do, about what Black Thunder, Lucky Puppies do, and we'll have to see if there's some comebacks or, you know, just a raffle stomp this time. It'll be interesting to see. They got about five seconds before they get into the game. And, uh, Ben, you know what? I, I, I want to go back to this Volley Bear. I, I love that we're seeing him right now and seeing some of these off-meta picks. Uh, you know, seeing seeing the cast come in. We haven't seen her in a while. Um, Jinx, you don't see too much anymore. I'm glad to see a couple of games of Nautilus in the support options as well. Yeah, Nautilus has been a uh, support around for a while, but I don't feel that Nautilus is all that great. And because I feel that... Um, the one and only Cow himself. Alistar is much better than Nautilus because of what uh, both of them do. Uh, Black, I mean, uh, Nautilus will always be using his abilities to either peel or initiate. And Alistar does that 10 times better in my opinion because he has that R, which makes him take 70% damage reduction. And then he does the same exact thing as Nautilus. So I feel like he's a better pick in most compositions, but I guess they just feel like Nautilus is a more comfort pick. That's why you pick him over Alistar, so... We'll have to see what happens with uh, the Nautilus hooks, because last game we saw that they were on point and that he used them correctly. It just sort of depends if he can do it this time against this team composition, because it's not the same team composition. There's no Syndra to kill, but instead there's a, a snake, so... Yeah, still gonna get a... Uh, not really as much burst, but uh, you get her fed enough, especially you get her stacks up. Uh, you know, get a good ult off, mixing that in with a couple of uh, E's as well. And it is going to be pretty strong. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. I, you know, it, it, there's, there's a, a lot up in the air still. Yeah, there's a lot about it in the air. Like last game, we saw that it was, even though Lucky Puppy had a, such a great lead, it was really about uh, Black Thunder coming together and fighting and just, you know, using their abilities to win the, um, the fight correctly. So it's going to really depend if Lucka Puppy this time can get that early lead again and then push their advantage and not lose it like they just did last game. And you may maybe make this series 1-1 instead of 2-0 uh, for Black Thunder. That'd be interesting to see. Uh, you know, this is something I like to ask every time you go, we, we get into the game. Where is the jungle pressure going to be at uh, as we head into this game? I think this time for the jungle pressure, Volibear is wanting to be camping that mid lane because the mid lane is going to be the best option of a gank for Volibear at least. And maybe Tom Kench, but I mean if Tom Kench gets to, you know, level 7, level 8, it's hard to gank. Cassiopeia will always be a good gank because you can ulti the Volibear, he can flash in, you can whimsy him, you can do all these things against Cassiopeia when you are 2v1 two, two, two and beat her. So we'll have to see what Volibear does, it's really going to be around Volibear. And for Vi, she can have a pick of little whatever lane she wants to gank. She can gank top lane, she can gank bottom. Because Vi is such a great gank of overall, it's just the team fights that make her sort of iffy. Because she has to okay. choose one target, and then she gets blown up. So we'll have to see what these guys do. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. We're going to be uh, heading into the loading screen in about five seconds. Stick around. We'll be right back.
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Game number two of this best of two in the Academy League between Lucker Puppies on the blue side and Black Thunder on the red side. My name is DJ Darkman D with Arcana. Head into this uh, game number two. And uh, I believe uh, uh, Black Thunder is up 1-0. Uh, yeah, Black Thunder showed an uh, impressive win last game, coming back from a 5k, 6k gold deficit from Lucker Puppies, who had shown such a great early game. Now it's going to be up to Lucker Puppies being behind in the game, that recognizing that, you know, we're behind the game. We should play this safe, or we should play this as hard as we can, like as risky as possible, because either of those two play styles is going to net you a win. Play risky, and you come out on top, you get a win. If you play safe, and then capitalize on what you know the mistakes of black thunder then you win this really is going to depend on what they're going to do and it's what's going to be depending on you know black thunder's rotations and all that other you know mumbo jumbo that we'll get into as we progress into the game and it seems like we're just doing a standard jungle start again no invasions no crazy you know i'm gonna have Brom run into you smack you with a stun just you know simple stuff yeah i mean they're not even setting up the light of skirmish i mean this is a basically a solo queue start where you just chill around where your jungler is and you know to help him out so it's just going to be a standard start as minions head into lane yeah it's not going to be anything crazy unfortunate you know we have a great bloodbath of the game last game i want to see it this time too so here we go freedom gets his grom goes in raven getting his now this mid lane should be interesting i think uh if it, it, as long as Hawkins can do a good job of dodging and always keep it on the move, he's gonna do a he's gonna be able to dodge the poison and not take a lot of damage, but he needs to not take turret shots. Yeah, definitely don't take turret shots. We had this last game where uh <laughs> Consig took his turret shot and it just didn't go well for him. He then got ganked and died. So don't take turret shots. We're one one. <laughs> one oh one I should say, not one one. Don't take turret shots and just walk away. Just be yeah. safe. <laughs> Oh man, Frosty Dog takes a lot of damage there, but not really much to, to back it up with VR uh, as he was going as he was reloading his time. Yeah, VR is going to be just constantly pushing in Frosty Dog for the first few levels. And just like the Shen matchup, he has the early game advantage. It's going to be up to Frosty Dog just to play safe and get those gray shields up and his damage up and wait for freedom to come into the game. Because one thing that Graves is really susceptible to is after he uses E, he's super susceptible to ganks. He's basically a very uh, slow shotgun guy. So you just got to kill him. But off oh, fighting... Hawken taking a lot of damage, but there comes in the uh, the Polymorph, but First Blood heading on over to... Oh man, actually here comes in Raven. He tries to jump away, flashes away as well, gets flipped back. And he's going to be able to back out from that one. Yeah, misplay from Hawkins, just sitting in the poison. I'm not sure why she, he didn't move away, but he just sat in the poison and let uh, Cassiopeia use her E reset every time because E uh, poison resets uh, Cassiopeia's E, if you didn't know. So, a uh, misplay from Hawkins. He should have just walked away and he would have been fine, but he decided to stay there. I guess because he was whimsied uh, that he stayed in the poison. It was just not a smart decision. Ending up in his death. Yeah. Uh, good job as well. I want to throw this out for uh, for VR up there in the top lane. Good job continuing to push in, and that's going to make Frosty not have a, a good time CSing. It's kind of hard in those early levels for Tom Ketch to CS out of the tower. Yeah, and you can already see that the Tom Ketch is behind a significant amount of uh, CS. About 14, and that's a lot. Consing is pushing his lead very well, but what should be happening is then Vi should be, you know, saying, hey, you know what, my top laner needs help, and we can gank him. But she's not doing that. She's just farming away in the jungle. I guess she wants to hit six before she starts ganking, but you need to help out your top laner before it just becomes a death. Like, he just becomes so useless that he can't do anything in the fights. He's just a sort of like, oh, I'm, I'm here. Hi. So we'll have to see what she does. Gets spotted up by this ward, though, right in the river as she goes up to gank. So we'll I don't think see. VR noticed that. Yeah, though. I don't think she he noticed that. He seems, he seems to want to keep on fighting. One more tongue shot is going to stun him up. Thankfully, that gray health is coming in. VR does get stunned up, and he's going to try to flash away and get in, but Freedom picks up another kill. This is another great early start for Lucker Puppies, but we'll see if they can press their advantage this time. Yeah, Lucker Puppies showed that they had a great early game, and that they know what to do in the early game. It's just like, you know, the mid-game started just to show that they didn't know that when they needed a group or when they needed to take fights and stuff like that, and, you know, that comes with experience. But another fight from Awesome Eater, hitting some great... 
poisons and getting some good damage on Hawking's. Yeah, you know, we I uh, mentioned earlier, Hawking really just needed to do a good job. Oh man, up at the top lane, Raven Smart, forcing the flash. Going back to uh, to what about uh, what I was saying about Hawking's, he needs to do a better job of dodging. Uh, the the poison coming out. I'm pretty sure awesome is not scripting. So I don't think it's that but uh, It's just he's doing a really great job of hitting all of his poisons. and That's really helping him out in this lane. Yeah, and it's also Hawking standing in the uh, Missile Ooh, good hook on to CJ the shield comes out though. Oh Perhaps oh. not gonna really do anything there. Yeah, unfortunate that the traps didn't hit from Jinx I didn't see that fight bot lane, but unfortunate that uh, she didn't get the hit the hook, I mean the E, what are they called, the traps on uh, Ezreal so that he died. Um, but that's what I was saying, like it's really hard to catch Ezreal. Oh, another E, another E. Uh, unless you catch him right there, he does jump away from that one. But great job by Solomon Grundy. Here comes in Raven in the mid lane. Oh, good Rips fight for five, but here comes in Freedom as well. Woo! The pass is taken, but it's not enough. Freedom picks himself up a second kill. And this is what we needed to see from Vi, causing some great early pressure. Yeah, Vi is showing up in all these lanes, making them better for them not to be losing. I mean, he did show up properly and get that kill. Oh, Frosty, like, almost dead! Oh, oh dies. Doesn't even have time to pop the shield as so much damage comes out. I think people, and I've been guilty of this uh, too in games, is you, you know how strong Graves is, but you still don't expect that damage. Yeah, Graves is just no for oh, damage. Oh, flashing onto Hawkins. I do think he's going to be able to get away. He throws the ultimate onto himself. That is gonna be. Excuse me, I need some water. <laughs> yeah, Hawkins does get away there using his ultimate. Uh, misplay from Awesome to not, you know, letting the Lulu face him first before flashing in and trying to commit to that kill. You have to let the, you know, Lulu face you, but oh, Frosty man. Dog. Frosty Dog doing a great job. Smith's about, he's gonna take one shot there. There's two stacks. One more tongue is gonna kill him out on this one. Can he get it? He's waiting, he's waiting. Where is it? There it is, finally. Frosty Dog picks himself up. First kill. Or, uh, his first kill, I think that is. And Consic does the same exact thing he did last game in the Shen. He got pulled into the tower. <laughs> he did it again. I think I think this is what Consic likes to do. He likes to be aggressive, but he doesn't <laughs> recognize he should back off sometimes. And he gets run in the tower. Just not as tanky this time. Yeah, he's not as tanky. He's a damage grave. So he needs to recognize he needs to back off and not let the stacks uh, be uh, lobster form, I should say, and get thrown into tower. <laughs> so um, he's needed playing safe. He has a lead, and he needs to recognize he has the lead. But um, Cassiopeia and Vaya just doing so well, too, at the same time. So he's oh, the only good spot right now for uh, Black Thunder. Having a little bit of fun in this bottom lane, uh, spamming some emotes. Is that Q just went right through the minion. I'm, I'm not the only one that saw that, right? Yeah, that was, that was interesting. <laughs> I, I play a lot of Ezreal. That does happen from time to time. The worst is when uh, your ultimate goes right through. Oh boy, that's that's a sad day. Yeah, it uh, it does make you a sad panda. Sad panda, boys. Sad panda. Sad <laughs> panda. Boy. VR going in once again. Throws out everything he can. Takes about half health right there. Yeah, and uh, Tom Kench is going to have a hard time versus Graves, as we all know. As we've just been seeing, it just being pushed in and taking tons of damage. Frosty Dog should just recognize that he should move away from this and go, uh, you know, mid lane and help out Cassiopeia maybe. Get a bigger lead or, you know, help Vi do a triple gank bottom or something like that. If he's getting pushed in all the time, he can't win this lane or farm. So, we'll just have to see what they do. Um, but it's going to be up to him just to recognize that. Unless he does it, it doesn't happen. Um, right now, sort of a lull though. No more action. What happened, team? Come on, show more action. Uh, you know what? It'll be coming out as Kinsei uh, continues to push up. He wants to get him under the tower. Uh, oh, oh, unfortunate. Yeah, that uh, that does suck. Yeah. But uh, man, Frosty takes a lot of damage once again. I think he's waiting for the shield to go off, and then he's going to push die. right on in onto him. Here comes in Freedom. He does throw the ultimate out. Here comes in the ultimate from the, uh, excuse me, from uh, Freedom. He's uh -oh, trying he to do what he can. He needs to move away. He stayed in that area too long. Gets hit with the second part of uh, his Q, I believe that is. There comes in the Polymorph onto Awesomenator. Slow comes in, a beautiful ultimate turns both of them to stone. And he's gonna be able to disengage. Ooh, good rocket. Hit him. Didn't kill him though. But yeah, unfortunate for Vi. Didn't recognize the damage from Graze and just says, oh wait, Volibear's coming back in. Oh, uh, almost gets hit with the Ezreal ultimate. 
He's going to jump in. He is slowed just a little bit. It gets hit with uh -oh. another Q. This is Missed the point it. where he needs to back out. He has his ultimate on now, but he's getting hit with poison. Actually, he might be able to pick this one up. There's the bite, and that is it. I'm pretty sure they should probably... They got all four here. They need to. They're pinging it now. They need to get the Rift Herald. Yeah, definitely a good play just to get the Rift Herald after killing about four people, but let's talk about that outplay from the base. Just recognizing his damage and Vi not recognizing it at all. Outplaying the poor Vi and getting a double kill top lane, and this is what we're talking about. If you get Graves ahead, he's a menace. He's gonna be just unstoppable, and he has now... What what is it? 40 CS? 38 CS on Tom Kench? That's a huge lead. Yeah, I mean he's uh, up until we saw those a uh, couple of calls come out right there, a couple of kills come out. Uh, really, that CS lead is what was keeping them tied up as they were, you know, down four kills to one. But the gold, they were only down by like you know four or five hundred gold. Uh, at this point now, though, they take the second tower of the game. They're up, uh, they're actually tied up right now, as uh, that was the blue side that picked up that kill, and I need to pay more attention. <laughs> no ways. Um, but they do get that turret bot lane, get, puts the gold lead back right to even, we'll have to see what they do from that. I think they should go for Dragon. Yeah, it looks like Dragon about to get started up. Uh, oh! There are, there's a rushing in Could Raven. Have they get over onto Solomon. The teleport now coming in, a flash, and they throw the ulti over onto Awesomenator. They're all right in a row, though, oh, for the Ezreal ultimate. Awesome he gets ulti. exhausted. The flash comes in. A rocket is not enough. He, they saw just enough for the dragon to come out, though, as they move over now onto Brom. He gets slowed just a tad. I don't think they're going to dive onto this, though. Yeah, Brom is really hard to dive onto, but Awesomenator, where's the ultimate? They were all right there. They're running at you. That was a perfect time, buddy. Didn't pull the trigger, didn't pull it because Vi is taking Dragon. I think they should have though because, you know, Cassiopeia's damage is just insane. Even though she doesn't have a ton of AP, I think, you know, being able to spam E that does 200 damage per second is a lot of damage. Uh, yeah, I do think if they would have used, if she would have used the ultimate right there, that would have been uh, a completely different fight and it would have gone the other way, netting them a couple of kills as well as the Dragon. Yeah, but we'll have to see what they do now. Um, they did get the dragon, which was good, and they're only down about 700 gold. That's not a decimate that, you know, is really going to make the make or break a game. Um, so we'll have to see if... Oh, Austin gets hooked, though. Uh, might not have been the best time to go in. Doesn't have any backup, but thankfully not too much damage is around. So uh, yeah. we do get to uh, go back on that. Yeah, doesn't have, doesn't have his team there. Don't take the hook if you don't have your team there. Rule 1-1. One, one. Again, that's Rule 11 now. Don't take the hook if you don't have your team. But, um, Vi just, you know, doing his thing, getting the lane, uh, lane's top pushed in. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I'm can't. sorry, that was great. Yeah, man. <laughs> Speaking is not my forte, it seems, today. Um, but Frosty Dog just doing his, his thing to, uh, mid lane, too. Oh, boy. I'm gonna let you talk now. Hey, that's cool with me, because VR can sing is coming around. Freedom not looking too good. He does jump away, but there's the dash. Uh, doesn't get hit with the, the Q, I believe it is. I'm just going to click on him and make sure. The ulti does hit, but it is not enough damage to finish the deal. Yeah, there was a lot of damage coming and in. And it is though. Q. End of the line. That's what it's called. End of the line. Yeah, now it's different. It's a different one now. It used to be Buckshot, but now that's yeah. new. So. I miss that, man. I, I do miss the old Grapes. He was a lot of fun, but I do think he's in a better position now. I do. I agree with that. I, I did miss the old grave though. I do miss that, you know, you can auto-attack all the time. You can auto-attack a few of the times now, so. Yeah. You know, there's, it's that feeling when uh, a champion you've played quite a bit gets uh, gets that rework. I was the same way with Poppy. I used to play a lot of Poppy back in the day. Um, and uh, I, I still like to play her from time to time, but it's just, it's not the same. Yeah, it's not the same when you can't ulti someone and then run into five people and not take damage, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> so. That was the best part. I mean, it was broken as hell, but uh, it is what it is. Yeah, unfortunate. But now we sort of hit a lull again. Another lull and not a lot of action. But um, let's talk about this ward count right now. We can see two pink wards on the uh, Dark Thunder side. And then we only see one for uh, Lucka Puppy, and it's rotated around the Dragon Pit. They need to start moving, or both teams really need to start moving the wards into the enemy jungle to see who's moving around and what's going on. Before making these aggressive plays mid lane, like right now, they're just trying to push in this mid lane, and they don't know what Graves is, they don't know what Jinx is. They could get collapsed on at any moment and just, you know, sort of die. So 
You need to start warding better, using the advantages of um, the Rift Scuttler, sort of behind the red pit, sort of. I don't know what it's called, but this sort of bush next to the re uh, red is where you need to start warding. Um, using in the blue on that side too, and just start pushing the lead in uh, wards if they want to make these pushes, so... Akko taking a lot of damage. He's going to go ahead and just, just pull himself out of that one. Probably a good call. They need to go, uh, they need to, he needs to head back is what I'm trying to say. They got plenty of wave clear right now. Heck, they have quite a bit with just Hawkins himself, who was able to defend the tower this last time. They're trying to push in as fast as they can once again. See how good the wave clear is this time around. Yeah, Lulu is a great wave clear with Jinx, and but they're getting poked out by this Ezreal and this uh, Cassiopeia. It's hard to dodge a lot of skill shots, and we all know that. So, a lot of tongues, a lot of cues from Ezreal, a lot of mystic shots, a lot of uh, what is it called, noxious blasts to dodge. So it's going to be hard. And something I need to comment on is Cassiopeia has maxed. Oh, okay. there's the hook over on the CJ. He does get away. Solomon oh, is going to get gets killed himself. Up. He throws down the glacial fissure. Raven's Guard has to flash away. In comes Freedom Eagle. Jumps all the way back in onto Hawkins. He's going to get the kill over onto uh, VR. Uh, VR can sing his now and stuff, but we'll take it out. Uh, awesome Nader. They're going over onto CJ now. One more is going to do it, and that is a 4 for 2. That's going to give, give them just a uh, little bit of extra gold as well as a tower. Yeah, Black Thunder just. Getting off, uh, killing the Bombay quickly, recognizing Frosty Dog might be in trouble though. Has to use his flash. Not going to be able to stick around too much. And uh, they might actually get a second tower here. I don't think they will. I think they'll have to back away because they're all so low. Weak sauce. Uh, get yeah, greedy, boys. weak sauce. <laughs> Should have done it, boys. Should have kept on going. But, you know, recognizing that they did just give win a fight, don't want to lose that fight. I mean, give back the gold they just won. So, just walk away, go heal up. Good fight from Black Thunder, killing off the Brombe quickly and then killing off the uh, Vi who was diving in the back line and just, you know, systematically picking off the carries from Lamb. Good fight from Lamb. Um, but what I wanted to talk about was on Cassiopeia. She is maxing Noxious Blast first. And this is something a lot of new players on Cassiopeia might not recognize. You want to be maxing Twin Fang uh, first because Twin Fang is going to do the most amount of damage when you have poison on a target. You can just keep on spamming you know, at level uh, 5 uh, Twin Fang at what, it's something ridiculous, like 200 or 250 damage at level 5. So, you know, you just have to have one tick of poison and all oh. those shots come off. Job stealing over the Guddler Crab there. Dragon oh. is up, everyone started to posture around this, Solomon does get hooked. But that might not be the best one you want to get in there. Hawkins is coming around. Frosty Dog not looking too oh, good. Nice and Grundy does go down. CJ is able to jump over the wall. And this <laughs> is going to be a dragon now. Uh, dragon number one. Coming in for Black Thunder. Yeah, evening up the dragon count. Smart move, of course. So uh, we'll have to see if they do anything. Is it a steal? No, unfortunately not. It is not. They tried. They tried. They yeah, tried. good try. Good try. You know, they didn't wimp out this time, right? Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. But, um, what I'm saying, <laughs> Cassiopeia needs to max E. Maxing E yeah. is better, more DPS, you have more shots off, and you only need one tick of poison to make uh, the Twin Fang reset work. So she's losing on a DPS, she needs to max it. But, um, moving on from they're, that... They're, they're just gonna push over onto this yeah. bottom tower. On Cass bottom gets tower. to push in the mid tower. So they're gonna trade one tower for one, Dragon is gonna go over. Frosty needs to make sure he doesn't get caught. He's just barely out of the way. He's going to try to go in. The flip is not there. Now it's there. He's going to get hit onto the, the bombs as well. Raven picks himself up a kill. CJ fairly low himself. The uh, mega, their super mega death rocket is not up. But it does look like they're going to get a second tower out of this in the bottom lane. Meanwhile, Cass and Vi are just chilling in the mid lane. The hook actually does land over onto Solomon. He throws out the... Field. That's gonna be all she wrote there. Yeah, Luck of Public is making a smart move and just pushing in two turrets because they lost that fight. They recognized they lost it. So they were like, you know what? Caught our losses. Let's just push in. But CJ did a fancy flash layer. Sort of dodged the graves, but sort of went back into him at the same time. It was interesting. I just wanted to point that out because he doesn't have flash now and he doesn't have heal up in about 30 seconds. But he didn't have flash. He should have just flashed away, actually, not flashed into graves. He could have died. Would have been a lot worse. Yeah. 
just just a little bit. So we're just now hitting that 20 minute mark. Uh, good job as well by Osmator and Freedom. They did manage to get uh, two towers in the mid lane. It looks like they might get a third one here, but here and Sig is here. They're throwing everything onto him. He's not going to survive this. Whoa. He gets a kill out of it at least. He does get the uh, get killed. But here comes in Nautilus. Here comes in Hawkins. Looks like they are uh, going to get the kill over to Hawkins. I thought they were going to try to give that to Jonesy. Not going to be the case. Uh, and the tower survives. Yeah, that was a big misplay by Cassie P again. Missing her ultimate. And just, you know, he did, she didn't do anything. She just missed the ultimate. It was like, she should have let Vi start tanking first. And then hit the ultimate from Cassiopeia. So she was guaranteed a stun. That didn't happen. And then, you know, uh, Consig just blew him up after. Because one, Cassiopeia was tanking the turret. And two, he was, she missed ultimate. I don't know. It was just such a weird ultimate to miss. Oh, they're going over on to Chaco now. He misses the hook, but he's got some backup behind him. There comes in Glacial Fissure. It's going to knock him up. They're just trying to disengage. Frosty does get caught. He's going to get flipped back. Uh, doesn't have his shield at this point. He is going to die. Who's it going to get picking it up? Jonesy is the one. Awesomeator comes in. Next is Freedom Eagle. Jonesy is so low, but there is uh, no true shot barrage to come out at this time and get the snipe. Yeah, awesome Mana almost killing out uh, Jonesy there. And, you know, if she had he put those two extra points into E, you would have killed her. But unfortunately, she didn't do that, so she gets away with her life. Um, no as ulti to secure the kill either, so unfortunate. It happens though. Um, what, but what does Lucka Puppy need to do now? Let's talk about that. Like, what does Lucka Puppy need to do to come back into this game because they're behind? Lucka Puppy needs to recognize that since they're behind, they need to get wards out. There are not enough wards on the Lucka Puppy side. If you look at the mini map, at least for um, wards placed on the team, Red Side has all these wards around Ban, and that's like, what does you know the other side have? Let's check here. They have two wards in total. No, three wards. I forgot this one in the bottom lane. But that's not enough vision to see what's going on. And vision wins games. You can make picks off that. So they need to start warding around, getting more wards out, and just making picks. Raven Smart is going deep on this one. He doesn't get anything out of it, though. Just uh, takes quite a bit of damage. The team is going to back out from this one. They don't have graves with them. They, they're in a 5v4 at this point. It is a good opportunity to back out. We see Dragon up at 145 now. So no team wants to do anything uh, too dangerous at this point. Yeah, that Volar Bear is going really fast, though. Let's, let's just say that. Volar Bear was, was whimsy. That's a scary bear. He's going to be running at you pretty fast. Initiation, though. Yeah, they get knocked up onto two. They pull in Solomon. You have everyone off to the side. In oh, dies everyone man. else. Everyone is so low. The shutdown on Javai. But Hawkins uh, is going to pick himself up. One kill. Hawkins is going to go down himself. Actually, no, he's not. VR can sick doing so much damage. Takes down two. Takes down one, that is. They need to get over onto Frosty Dog. I think he needs to just turn around at this point and go over uh, to this Tom Kench. There's one hit. There's another. Solomon, bro, you need to just leave. You are too low. You don't want to get hit by anything. It looks yeah, like they don't looking, have any follow-up. It was looking good for a, a Lucka Puppy there. They had great, a good fade on Cassiopeia. They got the Jinx. Um, they killed her off, and it was a good flank. It was just unfortunate because Kunsing is so far ahead in those graves, he can just man mode and run up to everyone and be like, I'm going to shoot you in the face, boom, and kill them immediately. So it was unfortunate for them that Graves is so far ahead right now, and they just can't seem to make that fight work, even though it was such a good fight for them. Well, everyone is starting to come up now. They understand this is the time to go. Freedom does jump in. He takes a lot of damage. Here comes in the Glacial Fissure. Chaco is going to go down, but they need to just leave him and understand it is time to just go. They don't want to lose anybody else. Yeah, unfortunately. Especially with Dragon in 10 seconds. Oh, yeah. Dragon's up in 10 seconds. You want to go back for that and get that. Unfortunate that um, uh, Chaco had a follow before the Dragon, but I don't even think they can do it. Like, we would, I was just talking about wards. Look at all the wards in uh, Lucka Puppy's jungle. They have entire vision of that uh, dr uh, dragon side of the pit, and they can see everything what they're gonna be doing. So they can make an educated decision about if they wanna take this fight for dragon, if they don't wanna take this fight for dragon. And it's gonna be really hard for Lucka Puppies just to set up because there's so many wards everywhere. They have entire vision, Black Thunder does, of what's going on. So we'll have to see. They're trying to get this blue buffalo. I don't know what they're doing. Oh, and uh, no, it is uh, Hawkins that picks that one up. 
Yeah, Hawkins gets it. And now the so collapse. Dragon is up. Uh, Dragon is up, but uh, like I said, they are starting to, to collapse just a little bit, but they need to get out of there because they don't have the full team. Freedom going over onto Hawking. Freedom does get knocked up and then pulled on in. True Shot Barrage coming out, but Freedom is going to be going down. Hawking picks himself up. Oh, man. And Volibear's but still alive. Volibear, thanks to the passive, getting back quite a bit of help, but he does get stunned by the OP Tommy Kench. Chaco is taking quite a bit of damage himself. Raven is down. VR is here, but he is too far in. Gets exhausted, not doing too much damage, but just enough thanks to Jonesy being there as well. It is a 3v2 now. CJ is in. Jonesy is He's two back out for this one. They need to go ahead and just pick up Dragon. Oh, man. And goes down. Good. I can't believe this is actually happening right now. <laughs> oh! Slow does come down, but what an ultimate from Kaz turns that? into stone, picks up a double kill. Uh, and, and that is a three for four. <laughs> what was the ultimate Cassiopeia? <laughs> out of nowhere, I thought we had missed when she used it. I didn't see that it was even still up. Oh man, that was, I don't know what to say about that Cassiopeia ulti. I feel a little bit, I, I don't know. That entire fight, she didn't use it, and then she just uses it right then, and she could have saved her teammate. She could have saved, you know, Vi. She could have saved her bomb. She just was like, you know what, I'm going to use it right now. Perfect moment. I, I guess they win the fight, well, okay. I don't feel that they use it correctly. I'm going to throw this out there because I do have the stream on my second stream right now, on my second screen. Uh, she never had a good opportunity to use it. Nobody was even looking at her. All right, fair so, enough. So I'll give her that much. And, and I, we, we need to apologize for uh, throwing that out there. But a fight now going on around the red buff. Here comes uh, the Glacial Fissure. They're going to throw the ultimate onto Raven, but the exhaust onto Freedom. He's just so tanky at this point, but the rest of the team isn't there for backup. Chaco now coming in. Frosty does get popped up. Uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Raven oh. uh, does get the, the Lulu ultimate as Vi goes down to Jinx. True Shot Barrage comes through, Tom Kench goes down, nothing else is going on. You can start to tell I'm getting tired because my calls are just getting worse and worse. <laughs> but no this way. is a good opportunity uh, to push up into this mid lane. They do have the open inhibitor. They got two down, but they don't have a Graves with them who's at full health, just farming in the bottom lane. A uh, flash and a flip over onto CJ. But here comes the awesome Nader. Gets bit, but it is not, uh, it is not enough. Ezra picks himself up and kills. Yeah, it was a good fight. Uh, I actually don't think it was a good fight. Let me retract that statement. It was a fight in the jungle that <laughs> <laughs> Volibear was just not dying to. Volibear is so tanky, and there's not enough damage from Ezreal at this moment to kill him. And since he, he is building uh, MR, Cassiopeia can't do a lot of damage to him. Um, and then Tom Kench can't do a lot of damage because he's a tank. So he's just tanking and tanking and tanking those Lulu ultimates on top of him and shield. He's just an unstoppable beast. It's hard to kill him, and they finally kill him in the end because he oversteps his boundaries, but it's going to take a while to kill him in these upcoming fights. So I'm worried for Lucky Dogs because this could be a, a bad bad set for them. I meant Lucky Puppies, not dogs. They're not truly uh, full mutts yet. They only the the, the puppies. Yeah, so, you know what, at least you haven't, uh, at least neither of us have said uh, Blue Thunder this game, I don't think. I don't think we've said Blue Thunder. We could call them White Lightning and say Lucker, Lucker Dogs, I don't know. I mean, these, these are the Premier League teams <laughs> that are sponsoring these guys, so... Oh, Lord. So, uh, Tom Ketch is coming in in the top side. He's got a CJ with him. This not looking good for him. Uh, VR, he tries Whoa. to pull out all the damage that he can. It's not enough, though. Yeah. He goes down. That's a, a good kill coming over. I mean, it's just back and forth at this point. They're tr they're trading big gold leads, giving some of it back up. I mean, it is... Uh, it, it's... That was the right word to put this without uh, cursing on stream. It's a swingy game? It's NA. It's NA. All right, there we go. I like it. It's NA. There it's an go. NA game, boys. So, um... <laughs> But I, what I wanted to say is that even though Black Thunder is getting all these picks, they recognize, like, you know, well, they have wards. They can see the movement of the enemy team. So it's okay if, you know, they get picked off, I should say. Uh, unfortunately, they shouldn't be getting picked off, I should say. They should be grouping. They had the same problem that Lucka Puppies did. They should just um, be grouped together. Don't be solo. 
They did this last time. Welcome up, you did this last time. Black Black Thunder is doing the same mistake. They're getting overconfident and having people in different lanes and soloing. They just need to be grouped together, and as a unit, they will win fights. But if they're oh, not a but unit, the, but the fight is happening now. They do a great job of zoning out thanks to the uh, the bombs there and the traps. Uh -oh. Here comes in, comes fine, flank. throws the ultimate. Everyone gets knocked up. Everyone on you know, oh, both no. sides is gonna get knocked up. It is just a total cloud fiesta of a fight. Both sides disengaging. Raven's trying to go back in, but it is not a good idea. Asiopia didn't ulti again. She could have ulti. I feel like if she just ulties, they'll win these fights because they'll at least stun one person to kill them. Oh man, Cassiopeia, please pull the trigger. You'll have so many kills in your pockets if you just do it. Unfortunate. Um, it was a 4v5. It just shows how strong Roller Bear is at the moment with the Lulu and all of this damage that's coming out. That how far um, Black Thunder is, at least in the composition wise and the gold. Um, we'll have to see what well, Luck of Puppies can really do because they got the pick on Graves. They just need to translate that into something a dragon, a tower, or a bear. Blue buff going over to uh, Consig. I think that's actually a good choice. You know, uh, Hawking at this point um, has. Oh, I Frosty can... Dog. Oh. Never mind. What I was going to say <laughs> doesn't matter anyway. So, uh, Blue buff goes over to Graves. I think that's a good choice. One minute to Dragon. Both teams are going to start setting up for this now, uh, possibly. Yeah, needs to get the wards down, at least Lucker Puppy does, since they are in the commanding uh, position, at least around the Baron Pit. I mean, not the Baron Pit, the Dragon Pit. And so they're putting down wards and all that stuff. Um, the one thing I want to talk about, like you were saying, that Lulu doesn't need a blue buff, it's true that she doesn't, but it's good just to have the CDR on her. Because at the moment, if I look at her champion, which I can't actually see it, dang it, I wanted to talk about how much CD she has. She probably only has about... She has zero. She has 20. But Messine's on Holy Grail. Yeah, you're, you know what? I pulled up her... Uh, oh, okay, never mind. I guess it just wasn't showing at the time, or it had moved over to a different champion. Uh, she is actually at 36.69%, uh, so it was uh, not very good to have it on her anyways. Oh, yeah. I guess it had just moved... I, I thought it said zero. I was like, what the heck? I pulled her up, I pressed C. I uh, must have moved over to a different champion uh, due to what uh, directed camera. Yeah, unfortunately. But um, yeah, she. If I was gonna say if she has forty percent, it's gonna be really good on her. But she doesn't. She almost does at least, so it's okay. It's good on Graves then. Um, my point is nullified. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Moving on from it. Um, uh, Black Thunder is starting this dragon off and they're pulling it out. Like we were talking about earlier, pulling it out is always smart. So they do that. To always. Recognize it. I'm pulling it out. Never mind. So. Uh, <laughs> dragon is gonna be. Uh, it does look like this dragon is. Probably going to the blue side. It does reset, heads back in. It's not getting too far out though. They're going straight on in. Freedom is going down. Oh, they don't have this fight anymore. Dragon is still aggroed. Now this is actually gonna be an easy one. Over to the red side, Graves picks that one up. CJ trying to do what he can, poking with his Q. Oh, speed. Here comes in, it's just such a fast Raven. <laughs> CJ not looking too good on that. He does get hit uh, with the uh, active on the Bork. Yeah, gets away with a little bit of life on him. Um, well, he does have a lot of life, but he just gets away barely. But here he comes, Polar Bear flipping. Oh, he tried to flip him, Solomon gonna be getting away. Yeah, unfortunate. But that fight was so spread out. If if Vi had done such great damage, AoE damage on the entire team, but there was no follow-up. Everyone was miscommunication there. People were running away. People were going, you know, running away from Nautilus Ultimate. No one was going in to help the Vi, and Vi was flanking. So a little bit of miscommunication there. If Cassiopeia ulted, Ooh, Frosty Dog actually gets flipped back. Ooh. He gets stunned up there. Uh -oh, He's Frosty gonna be going Dog. down. Who's it going to? Jonesy gets it. Graves ult did not hit anybody. The Here he comes, damage. the bear. The Volibear is just trying to go in. There's the flash, but the, the jump was not around anymore. He gets uh, made big. He does manage to pick up Grundy as Vi tried to go in, but didn't get anything. Instead, just died for her troubles. There comes in the death charge onto Ezreal. Uh, he's just going to uh, jump away with the blink, and that's going to be the first inhibitor of the game, finally down at 34 minutes. Yeah, it was a messy fight up to this point to get that inhibitor, but they get it in the end. And you know what? Ultimate is still up. Cassiopeia's. Cassiopeia ulti. Ulti them. Save your team. Do something with it because if you're just holding it, it's not going to do anything for you. You need to be using the ultimates as much as you can with at least Cassiopeia's, which is such a high impact ultimate. Even if it's bad at this case, 
because then you can at least save your teammates. I mean, you'll get it back eventually. It's not like, you know, you'll forever be gone. It's not a one-time use, buddy. But um, I'm giving him a hard time about yeah. it. Um, well, I mean, I, I think one thing he, need to, he needs to realize at this point is even you can't just hold on to it constantly. You've got to use it. Because yeah, even if you don't get this stun, you're still getting damage on it. If they're not looking at you, you're still going to get the dam uh, a good amount of damage off at least. So you can't just hold on to it. You, you can't always wait for that perfect ult. Sometimes you just have to ult. Yeah, just to I, think, throw out I think you're right. She's looking for, or at least he is looking for that perfect ultimate Cassiopeia. Just dream team, Mumu, everything, you know, that AoE combo wombo, and it's just not gonna happen. Sometimes you just gotta take the two man stun or the one man stun and just call it a day and get that kill and, you know, move on from it. But that's a lot of damage that, that's just not coming out in these fights, and they're living with so much health that if I feel like Cassiopeia ulti, they would be dead. They'd just be gone. So, unfortunate. Uh, plays by her, we'll have to see if she just finally pulls the trick and says, you know what, screw it, I'm gonna ulti, I'm just gonna do it. And I, you know what I feel also is that it's because she missed those ultimates on the Lulu and the Graves earlier that she doesn't want to make a mistake. And that's what you don't want to do as a League player. Making mistakes is okay. It's the, you know, we may give you our time about it as Cassis, but making a mistake is gonna happen. Like oh. right now, this ulti, yeah, there you go. The that's ulti perfect. saves her, gets Great. a kill. Freedom is going to jump in the rest of the way now. Solomon trying to get any stunts that he can off. Here comes in a Tommy Tom Kench. Going over onto Raven. It looks like Chaco going to be going down. They continue to push over onto Raven. Tries to do the flip on over to Awesome. A ton of rockets Whoa. come out, though. Here comes Graves now. Frosty Dog not going to be looking too good with this. Has to flash away. Uh, does he have collateral? No, collateral damage was already used, but a super mega death rocket is going to finish that one off, and they're going to finish this push uh, into the top lane, and possibly, I don't think they're going to end it at this point. And they kill as really might. Yeah, I mean, the, the these timers are still fairly long, but they just don't have the minions where they needed to be at that time, which just kind of is going to delay things just a minute. Uh, the flip back actually gets hit as he tries to go. He is going to go down. And uh, yeah, this might be the end of the game right here. Or they could back out. Either either one I think is a, a smart decision at this point. I think they're going to try to end it. At least the two ADCs. They're like, you know what? Let's end this game. I think we can win it. Yeah, and it looks like it's going to be over. It. Congratulations goes out to Black Thunder. If they can do it, thankfully, Polly is going to end it for uh, uh, Excuse me, uh, Black Thunder is going to pull out a uh, game number two, take this series 2 and 0. Oh. Yeah, great game for Black Thunder there, showing that they knew what they would, you know, what their composition was meant to do. And Gray's got such a great lead early game, he just kept on rolling through, providing so much damage. Let's look at the damage chart real quick. How much damage did he do? He did uh, 35,000 damage. Um, the only one close to him was actually Ezreal at 43. He did more damage than Graves, and I'm actually surprised by that because Graves was just dumping out damage. I'm surprised that even uh, Ezreal got that close to him. Or, I mean, even did more than him, so... I mean, you know what, it, Ezreal and Graves don't have to get a ton of kills and, and do a whole lot to get a ton of that damage. A good example is uh, playing in the, the in-houses last night. I played a terrible game as Corgi. I got my butt kicked. I fed. I still ended up doing, like, the third most damage or second most damage overall in the game. It, it, it's just a matter of he's in such a – both those champions are in such a great place right now. Yeah, both of the champions in a great place. But good game for Black Thunder, good game for uh, Luck of Puppies. Maybe next week they'll get a better game off. So, But, um, you know, good game from both of them. Yeah, uh, so thank you guys so much for coming out here. I want to thank both of my color casters, uh, Arcana and the Sage.